public place. Thank you very much. Would the clerk re please uh, call the roll? There are 13 present. Okay, Alderpersons uh, Trester, Schneider, and Donahue are excused, and Alderperson Ryan Fleisch is joining us on a remote hookup. Um, today we have uh, uh, Boy Scout Matt Worth here. He's part of Troop 885 from St. Paul's Church in Sheboygan <laughs> Falls, and he's working on his Citizen in the Community Merit Badge. I'd like to call him forward to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next is the approval of our, uh, the minutes from our last Common Council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mary. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is public forum. City Clerk. There are nobody, there are nobody, there aren't any public forum this evening. Thank you. Uh, next we'll go on to Mayor's announcements. Last weekend, um, the um, Firefighters Union held their Fill the Boot campaign for MDA, and I'd like to call up Lieutenant Blaine Werner for a report on that and uh, give us a little idea as to uh, the success of the program. Thank you. Thank you. Some of uh, you may have uh, seen us on the streets at 8th and Erie and at 25th and Superior. Uh, this year was the first time we went to 8th and Erie. We always had a good uh, location at 15th and North. We thought that was the best place ever. Four-way stops, everybody had to stop. We found that 8th and Erie is just, maybe just a little bit better. Uh, the Fill the Boot campaign is the uh, number one cause, uh, number one fundraiser for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. It started in 1954 with a person that just passed away yesterday, Jerry Lewis. I know a lot of you may have remembered Jerry Lewis uh, sitting at home listening to sing on, on Labor Day and that type of stuff. And um, he started that until about, uh, about 15 or 13 years ago. I think he ended up um, um, too ill or something like that to continue on. But over the past years, last year the firefighters raised $24.5 million for the muscular dystrophy, $583 million in the history. Uh, the best year we had was in 2015. We had $15,501. That was with the uh, pro golf course going back and forth past past our station. Then last year we were able to increase it to $17,266 and this year we had $18,478. Of that, a lot of people stop and say, I only have coins, I only have coins, I only have coins. We had over $1,600 in just coins. We had to take them over to the bank in a, in a bucket today. Um, so we had two of those and that was uh, $1,600, almost like that. So we have uh, $18,478, that was a record for us. So thank you, citizens, for supporting us. We really appreciate that. Blaine, thanks for everything that you and the firefighters do to help out MDA. And we have a special guest here, Dan Rostelin. He's the exalted ruler of the Sheboygan Elks Club, and he's got a special presentation for you. Dan? Uh, yeah, we were a little busy to stop by with our, uh, our, our Elks Fest, which went really well. But on behalf, behalf of Sheboygan Elks Lodge number 299, we'd like to present you a check of $2,000. Oh, oh. And we hope that uh, the, our intent is to continue us in, uh, this in the future, and hopefully we'll be able to make it a little bigger next time. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you, gentlemen. Next, I'd like to ask Cinda Langhoff to come to the front. Cinda Langhoff began her journey with the city of Sheboygan on November 8th of 1999. She started her career in the assessor's office and after five years transferred to the city clerk's office. Cinda has been a true inspiration to the city. She knew her job and knew how to do it well. 
From licensing to elections and everything in between, Cinda was always ready to help with a smile. Her contagious laugh could be heard throughout City Hall, as you can see, and could brighten everyone's day. During the last month of her employment, the city clerk's office spent each day showering her with her favorite things. They were honored to be able to convey to her how much she meant to everyone in City Hall. We, will, we truly miss her, because she's been gone for a few weeks already, and wish her only the very best in her retirement. And I'm very honored to present you with the certificate of appreciation. Is is honored to present Cinda Langhoff this uh, certificate of appreciation and recognition of your 17 years of dedicated service from November 8th of 1999 through July 28th of 2017. Now, one of my major interactions with Cinda is after the council meeting, she'd bring me all the documents to sign, and she always made sure that I signed them in the right place and, and got every document. And Cinda, this one contains my last signature for you. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, working for the city was um, a pleasure. Um, and I couldn't have done it, my job as well as I did, without having my coworkers um, by my side helping me. Um, all the people, the, the, the public even, made the job a pleasure to do because um, that's what we were there to do, is to help serve the community but without the help and the great co-workers not only in the clerk's department but in every department that we um, have contact with um, which is almost everybody <laughs> um, it, it wouldn't have made the job um, as much of a pleasure if you don't have great people that are working with you and are behind you to make the job an easy place to work. And I thank you um, from the bottom of my heart. Um, I already missed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just thank you. And it was my pleasure and my honor to work with everybody that I worked with. Thank you. Thank you. That was something, we turned those laughter into tears. <laughs> Not unusual. <laughs> Last Friday, a local group, Forward Sheboygan, brought the residents of Sheboygan together at Fountain Park to stand up against hatred, bigotry, and standing for love and peace and understanding. This candlelight vigil was in response to the protest in Charlottesville, college town in Virginia, against their plans to remove a local statue of Confederate Army General Robert E. Lee. The U.S. Conference of Mayors developed a mayor's compact to combat hate, extremism, and bigotry. The 10 components uh, include, number one, expressly re rejecting extremism and all forms of bigotry. Number two, denouncing all acts of hate wherever they occur. Three, ensuring public safety while protecting free speech and other basic constitutional rights. Number four, calling for fully resourced law enforcement and civil rights investigations of domestic terrorism and hate crimes. Five, elevating and prioritizing anti-bias and anti-hate programs in our community. Number six, supporting targeted communities and bringing together civic and community leaders to build trust. Number seven, celebrating diversity, promoting inclusivity and challenging bias. Number eight, promoting law enforcement training on responding to and reporting hate incidents, hate crimes, and domestic terrorism. Number nine, encouraging residents to report hate and crime incidents. And number 10, maintaining civil rights enforcement and strengthening hate crime laws when necessary. Last week, I joined over 250 mayors from across the United States and signed on to this compact. I hope that you will join me and our citizens as we say no to hate, extremism, and bigotry. 
on Saturday, September 9th, at noon at, from noon to 5 o'clock at Fountain Park. Please join over 20 community nonprofit organizations and the Sheboygan Chamber of Commerce in recognizing and celebrating the diversity that makes our community strong and vital. Attend, come together, a festival celebrating unity in our community. The festival will feature live music, entertainment, food trucks, family fun. It's all coming up on September 9th at uh, Fountain Park, and you have a flyer on your desks. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. It'll include uh, items 2.2 through 2.10. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Lewandowski. I would like to ask that 2.7 be voted on separately. Okay, we'll take 2.7 first. 2.7 is RC number 96 of 1718 by finance and personnel to whom was referred resolution number 51 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue and Boren authorizing into a collaboration agreement and memorandum of understanding with the City of Sheboygan, Sheboygan Housing Authority and the Plymouth Housing Authority for the completion of the 2019 through 2023 20, assessment of fair housing practices. Need a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Lewandowski. I just want to say that since I live in a Sheboygan Housing Authority building, I'm going to abstain from voting on this because I think it would be the ethical thing to do and not uh, show any hint of a conflict of interest. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on 2.7. Eyes, one abstention. Motion passes. Then the other items on the um, consent agenda other than 2.7 are before us. Is there any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on their remaining uh, items on the consent agenda? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.9 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 4.1 will lie over. And items 4.2 through 4.4 will uh, be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, Item 5.1 is RC number 99 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, whom is referred resolution number 54 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue and Boren, authorizing the establishment of an appropriation in the 2017 budget for engineering and TIF planning services. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Boren. No, I, I thought had on before. Okay. Sorry. Right. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Next is item 5.2, RC number 93 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee to was referred pursuant to RO number 104 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting various licensed applications and recommends that beverage operators license number 1766 Quisenberry 
be denied based upon her record of violations related to the licensed activity, her history as a habitual law offender, and presence of warrants due to unpaid fines and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Taylor Quinsbury here? Mr. Quinsbury or Ms. Quinsbury didn't show up to our meeting, although re requested, and it was unanimous that her license be denied. Thank you for that. Those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 92 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee, to whom was referred pursuant to RO number 104 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting various license applications and recommends that the beverage operator's license application number 9642, Peroni, be denied based upon a record of a violation related to the licensed activity. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Tiffany Peroni here? Tiffany is not here. She did, however, come to our law and licensing committee meeting, and we did have a hearing to which um, both sides were um, represented and questions were asked of both sides. The final um, verdict on that particular case was a referral from our police department for denial and a unanimous vote um, to deny her license as well. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. Motion passes. Uh, next is, uh, is uh, general ordinance 6.1. That'll be referred to the finance and personnel and also the city planning commission. Under uh, matters laid over, item 7.1 is RO number 127 of 1718 by the Board of Contract Examiners submitting applications for building contractor licenses already granted. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I ask that this be accepted and filed. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those are before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 7.2 is resolution number 55 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf changing the name of the North Flats neighborhood to Maple Heights neighborhood. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That's before us for discussion. Alderperson Sorensen. I just had one quick question. Um, where did the, the, how do we come up with the name Maple Heights neighborhood? Was that a historical name or what, what was? Chad Pelichek, can you help us out with that question? Being the president of the North Flats neighborhood, um, we have conducted an extensive discussion on next door with our neighbors over what our name should be. Um, they don't necessarily like North Flats because Flats in this community has a stigma of kind of being a lower income neighborhood. So the decision was Maple Heights and the fact that we've got a lot of maple trees and it kind of brings a little prestige to it. So we thought it was a nice name. We've thrown around a lot of names over the course of the last year. Um, Maple Grove, Oak Tree, different things, but um, Maple Heights seemed to resonate with a number of the residents, so that was the request to bring forward. Thank you, Chad. Any other discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to other matters, city attorney. 8.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting an application from Abacus Architects, Inc., Derek Lemihue, to rezone property located at 2724 Colton Memorial Drive from Class Suburban Office SO to Class Urban Residential UR. That'll be referred to the City Planning Commission. 8.2 is a general ordinance uh, by Alderperson Savalio and Lewandowski amending the City of Sheboygan official zoning map of the Sheboygan <coughs> Zoning Ordinance to change the use district classification of property located at 2724 Colden Memorial to Drive from Class Suburban Office SO to Class Urban Residential UR classification. And that'll be also referred to the City Planning Commission. 8.3 is a resolution by Alderperson Savalio and Lewandowski. Uh, uh, directing a public hearing to be held in connection with the change of the city's official zoning map for property located at 2724 Kohler Memorial Drive. That item will be held over. And 8.4 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2017, June 30th, 2018, and June 30th, 2019. Those will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your time tonight.